This little device can save your life and millions of dollars. Not only this, we have this, this, and even this little tube. If it is set properly and calibrated regularly, can save your life on entering and closed spaces and helps the accuracy of the operations during cargo tanks preparations so you can avoid delays, lines blockage, and containment system corrosion and deterioration, which cost millions of dollars. In today's video, I will discuss the different gas meters that can be found on LNG ships or any gas carrier. Some of them exist on all ships. I will describe them, how to use, and calibrate them. This information must be known by every officer or engineer on gas carriers and can help you securing job interviews to join the gas industry or your promotion interview. What I will explain today is the same information I share with my officers and engineers on board LNG ships, especially when preparing for site inspection since it is a requirement. Now, instead of repeating myself every time, I will share only the link of this video with them to review it. You can do the same and save your time maybe to watch my other videos. By the way, this video is purely technical. If you are here for life at sea vlogging videos, don't waste your time. You can see this video instead. Hi friends, welcome to the LNG Club series. If you are new here, my name is Mustafa and I'm a ship's captain. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. On board ships, we enter on closed spaces such as ballast tanks, hold spaces, double bottom pipe passage, etc. either for regular inspections or for repairs. To enter these tanks, which were closed for a long time, we need to ventilate them at least 24 hours and we need to check the atmosphere inside the tank before entry to make sure there is enough oxygen to breathe and there is no toxic or flammable gases inside. To do this, we need to use these devices. The other reason we use them is when you are preparing our cargo tanks either for first loading after shipyard dry dock or when the vessel is going to dry dock so the tanks are opened for repairs or inspections. We do have on board gas carriers fixed gas sampling and detection systems, but they are not our focus today, only the portable ones. You will hear often the term LEL and UEL in gas carriers, which are the lower explosive limit and the upper explosive limit for flammable range for any given gas. Let's take the example of LNG. Methane flammable range is between 5 and 15 percent. Lower explosive limit or lower flammable limit is the lowest concentration of the substance in air that will cause fire when an ignition source is present. At concentrations lower than LEL, the mixture is too lean to burn. At the concentrations more than UEL, the mixture is too rich to burn. Hence, we need to keep our atmosphere always in the LEL range. So this LEL range from 0 to 5% volume is given the scale 0 to 100% LEL. In other words, 50% LEL equals 2.5% volume and 100% LEL equals 5% volume. You need to understand this before going further. Pause the video and go through this illustration until you fully understand it. And don't worry, I will wait for you. This is the same for other gases. Propane flammable range 2 to 9% volume. So 50% LEL equal 1% volume and 100% LEL equal 2% volume of propane. The reason to divide the lower range to a scale of 100% is to always monitor the scale of flammability and keep it all time as low as possible and have accurate measurements. Another terms you need to know are the ones regarding the exposure limits for toxic gases such as hydrogen sulfide, carbon monoxide, etc. The time weighted average, TWA, represents the highest average concentration of substance measured over the duration of 8 hours workday and 5 day working week. In other words, it is the average level of gas exposure permitted during a specific period of time. The short term exposure limit, STEL, refers to the maximum concentration of substance in the air as a time weighted average over 15 minutes period. This limit must not be exceeded during 8 hour working day. So this equipment must be well maintained and calibrated in a regular basis, even more. You need to know how each gas sensor works to be fully aware of the device limitation and to avoid wrong readings. Each gas has its own detecting sensor type, such as NDIR, non-dispensive infrared, catalytic, electrochemical, semiconductor, pilister, etc. Each sensor for specific gas, but we we'll focus only on the infrared and the catalytic to avoid any misuse. NDIR. When the sample gas is introduced, it will absorb some infrared at a particular frequency. So the light absorbed is converted to a reading, hence the gas concentration or percentage. This is why the carbon dioxide is contributing to global warming, same for the methane slip. These greenhouse gases absorb heat radiation from the Earth's surface and release it in all directions, including back toward Earth's surface. Global warming. Generally, any gas meter with infrared hydrocarbon sensor is used for ion atmosphere and called tank scope. Catalytic sensor. The sensor consists of detector cell and reference cell. The detector cell basically is platinum wire coil to which the carrier is attached, and it is coated 
with the oxidization catalyst, such as aluminum. Okay, let me stop here because it's a bit complicated with all these technical terms. Let's consider this sensor as a small chamber with a wire inside. When the hydrocarbon gas is introduced, it will burn inside this chamber. The heat generated will be converted by this wire to a reading or gas concentration. And this brings us to the limitation of this sensor. For the combustion to occur, you need oxygen, pi triangle or tetrahedron. So the minimum oxygen percentage for this sensor to function properly is 11%. The device has flashback arrestor installed to avoid igniting the external sample. The type of meters with this sensor are called explosimeter. So any gas meter with hydrocarbon catalytic sensor cannot be used in ionic atmosphere such as gassing up or igniting operations or when checking hydrocarbon contact before arms or hoses disconnection since there is no oxygen. Instead, we use the infrared type sensor with no limitation. These equipment need to be tested and calibrated in a regular basis. There are three tests. First is the BAMP test, not PAMP, BAMP, B-U-M-P. To do this, you need a span cylinder which contains a defined gas percentage, same as your meter. You connect it, open the cylinder and check two things. If the readings are matching and if the alarms sound when exceeding the limits. Second one is zero calibration. Zero calibration is just to adjust zero for all gases. Zero for hydrocarbon, zero for H2S, zero for CO, and adjust the 20.9% for the oxygen. To do that, you go to fresh air and push whatever button needed to do the zero calibration. This is done before each use. The span calibration. The span calibration is to accurately adjust the reading of the gas meter sensor. We have the span gas cylinders with defined gases percentage. You connect this equipment, go for the span calibration menu, open the cylinder and adjust the sensor's readings as per the bottle. You can do one sensor calibration at a time or auto calibration where you insert the figures of the bottle and the meter will adjust its reading. But be careful when doing the span calibration for explosimeters. The span bottle need to have oxygen percentage to calibrate it. Some span cylinders have only hydrocarbon and nitrogen. So this one to calibrate the tank scope only with infrared sensor. This calibration is done regularly as per your company policy every three months, six months or yearly. Enough theory and let's jump to the meters and review them. You may have different brands and equipment in your ship, but the principle is the same. Just review the manual for the correct operations. Personal gas meter. Personal gas detectors keep workers safe from atmospheric hazards by continuously monitoring the user's breathing zone. These detectors operate at close range to the user. Onboard gas carriers, it is taken when inspecting any enclosed space or void space such as ballast tanks. As you can see here, it is a bit dirty from the mud accumulating inside the ballast tanks. It has clipper here, so you can hang it to your boiler suit but avoid hanging it close to your mouth because when you are breathing out, you are exhaling CO2 and no oxygen, so it may give you a false alarm. Um, a charging port, a screen for concentration readings, four sensors for four gases, lights for visible alarm, a speaker for audible alarm, and only one push button to do everything, powering on, powering off, and calibration. To switch on, you need just to keep pressing the button. During starting up, the device will show you the low and high alarm settings. It will do self-check and then an auto zero calibration. We'll just keep the screen close to the camera, the exposure for the toxic gases and low high alarm for the four gases. Now it starts the self-test. Testing OK, and then it goes to the zero calibration. 20.9 for the oxygen and zero for all gases. Four sensors. We have the oxygen, we have the H2S, uh, CO in PPM, and the hydrocarbon in LEL. Now the meter is ready for use. To do the span calibration, this device is a bit tricky. You will see for the other meters, you can do the span calibration for each sensor. However, this one, you do the span calibration for all sensors at the same time. It has preset figures for the calibration, so you need to connect a span gas cylinder with the same figures. So this is the span calibration cylinder. It has these figures 25% or 25 ppm for hydrogen sulfide, 50 ppm for the carbon monoxide, methane 2.5% volume, which is 50% LEL and 12% oxygen, more than 11%, so you can calibrate the catalytic uh, sensors for the hydrocarbon. 
Let's connect this pump gas cylinder to the gas meter. First, you connect this calibration tool because it doesn't have any pump to suck this pump gas. Connect it to the cylinder through a regulator. And before going further, you need to access the calibration mode. Keep pressing the switch off button until you access the calibration mode. Once you have the access, it will ask you to apply the gas, and then you open the bottle and it will do the calibration by itself. Multi-gas detectors. This detector is mainly used for ionized atmosphere such as cargo tanks during pre- and post-dry docking, checking the atmosphere of the shore arms or hoses before disconnection, etc. This hydrocarbon sensor is an infrared type since the ionized atmosphere does not have any O2 content. So to switch on, you need just to keep pushing the power button for a while. It will check the battery status. Then it will ask you if the filter is on. This filter is to avoid any moisture or dirt is introduced to the meter. So the filter is connected, we confirm. It checks the sensors, then it warms up for 30 seconds. This meter has two sensors, hydrocarbon and oxygen. I've seen the same with four sensors. So before using it, you need to do the zero calibration. You have the zero button, keep pressing. It will ask you if the meter is in the fresh air. Apply fresh air, you press confirm, okay. And then it will adjust the zero for hydrocarbon and 20.9 for the oxygen. This one has a pump, so sometimes it takes one to two minutes to reach cargo tank number one. So to avoid draining the battery, just do the zero calibration in CCR and pause the pump. Once you reach your sampling point, resume it again. This button to check the battery status, and this one to check the peak reading. You can see here P, so the max for hydrocarbon and the minimum for oxygen. To do the span calibration, you need to keep both zero and pump button pushed simultaneously. Now it will ask you to apply hydrocarbon gas. You confirm that cylinder is connected. Normally, once you open the gas, the reading will go up to match the figure. And then you need just to fine tune by increasing or decreasing the value. Once you adjust it, you press OK, and then it will ask you to apply the oxygen gas. You open the bottle with another cylinder, and then you adjust the oxygen value. Another gas meter, you may have it on board. This one is mainly used for enclosed space inspection. You can use it for other operations, but not to read the hydrocarbon concentration in ionized atmosphere, since this one has a catalytic sensor. Some companies, they have only the personal gas meters and the previous multi-gas meters to detect the different gases. Let me know in the comment section below if you have it on board. So almost same guide, a meter with the screen, buttons to power on, reset, silence the alarms, change the display to check the peak reading, time in operation, battery status, etc. Change the CH4 unit from LEA to PPM, air button to do the zero calibration and the shift button to access the span calibration. Here the trick to access the span menu calibration. This is why you need always to read the menu before using any meter. This one, you need to switch on the calibration setting menu first from this tiny switch inside. Let's open it. Okay, let's switch on. This meter has four sensors, CH4, oxygen, H2S, and CO. To do the zero calibration, just keep pushing the air button. Adjusting zero, hold air key. Reading zero data. By pressing the adjust and shift button simultaneously, you access span calibration menu. You have the auto calibration, single calibration, and normal operation. For the auto calibration, you do the calibration simultaneously for the four sensors. For the auto calibration, you need to connect the span gas with the same concentration. For the single calibration, you go sensor by sensor and you adjust the concentration as per the reading from the cylinder. You are often here in the gas industry, dragger pump and dragger tubes. It is not the name of the items, but the name of the brand. Gas detector tubes are one of the classic measurements methods used for gas analysis. 
Negatives are glass filled with chemical reagent that react to a specific chemical. The monoyl pump is used for spot measurement with these tubes. The body of the pump consists of billows which is pushed together and released, drawing the gas sample to be measured through the tube. This pump has counter which counts the number of strokes. You need to squeeze it properly so this small bar can push this button. This little hole here to break both tube ends. So before use, you need to check the integrity of the pump and confirm no damage or holes. You need just to squeeze the pump and insert the tube and wait for a while to see if the pump expands. If it does, it means that the air is sucked from here or from any area where it may have holes. Now let's move on to the tubes. Each tube for specific gas has scale. Sometimes two scales for more accuracy. A narrow to show the direction toward the pump and more importantly, how many strokes you need to have the reading. You check this on the tube where it's written N. For this tube, N equal 1 for scale 5 to 10 ppm and N equal 6 for more accurate scale from 0.5 to 2 ppm. For the reading, the tube inside will change color. You check which color in the guide inside the box. For this tube, it will go from light gray to dark gray. One last thing, when you have the final reading, you need to multiply by a factor to correct it for the actual atmospheric pressure. F equals 1013 divided by the actual pressure. The other instrument we have on board is a dew point meter to measure the moisture or humidity inside the tanks before proceeding to tanks cool down to avoid water freezing and formation of corrosive agents. This one is simple to use. Some ships have electronic one though. This device has its knob to switch on, check the battery status, and to take the dew point reading. To insert the hose into the sampling point and close the exhaust line. If there is pressure from the tank, then this head, called the desiccant head, will lift up by itself, drawing the sample inside. Otherwise, if there is no pressure, lift it up by yourself, allow 3 minutes for the needle to stabilize, and take the reading. This device is calibrated every 2 months. Do this, switch to read, Leave the head up and down three times and leave it up for one minute. Then adjust the needle with the screwdriver from here to match the auto calibration line in the scale. Make sure to share this video with all officers and engineers across the gas shipping industry so they can be well prepared for any question from sire or CDI inspector or just to prepare for their interviews. You may check out this video here for how the energy ship is prepared for first loading using these equipments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.